Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Jason Hall, the lead pastor of Dream Movement Church in, here in Katy, Texas. And i um, just excited to share some things today about God on race, part two. A couple weeks back, we talked about God on race, and we're coming from a biblical standpoint. And also, just to mention that there is hundreds of Houston pastors that are committed to the same message, to the same series in the month of October and even beyond. Um, we see this as an issue in our country for hundreds of years, but also um, just to give a biblical perspective, uh, understanding of um, what does God think about race and differences and cultures and all these different aspects of who we are and our differences. So I want to say a word of prayer, and then we're going to share a word um, about that this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for us gathered here today. Lord, I'm so grateful that you've presented this time, this season, and this word. All things belong to you. All people belong to you. All nations belong to you. All countries and all the differences. Lord, I pray that your word would fall on deaf ears, that you would rise up and prick our hearts to grow in you even greater. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome, everybody. Again, we're so excited to share today. We're going to talk about God on race, part two. A few weeks back, if you want to go um, in the Dream Movement Katie Facebook page, you can go see part one and you can get an understanding of what we've been talking about. But I'm also going to share a quick recap of what we've been discussing the past few weeks. So we talked about Genesis chapter one, verse 26. And it talks about how we are created in the image of God. And so another word for image is we're representatives or we're ambassadors. We're a snapshot of who God is. We're images. And we know that in our world, we see thousands and thousands of images every single day via our phone, on television, online, on different websites. We're constantly having images presented to us, different images, good images, bad images, images that are, can change our lives and images that can head for us for destruction in this world. We also talked about God's love expressed in different cultures, in different ways, in different people, and even in different languages, how God's love. And so another thing, it was in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. If you go down about 10 or 11 verses, it talks about the, power, the Tower of Babel. And that was a place where the languages were divided. They were trying, a people group were trying to build a tower. And God had to disperse the languages because they were trying to reach heaven on their own without him. And so we talked about that as well. And, and there was different races and different people groups, but God had to come in and di divide the languages. He had to do that. So I want to talk about with this God on race part two, three different points that the Lord gave me to talk about and various scriptures that will support those efforts. Um, number one is we're unique on purpose. Number two is we have understanding, God's understanding and his posture. And number three is we're unified. Unified was his greatest desire. It's always his desire for us to be unified. And so let's start with the uniqueness if you look in Psalms 139, verse 14, it says, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. You know what? This scripture is so powerful. When he says fearfully, he means he created you with reverence. He, he reverenced you when he created you because you were so unique and so beautiful to him. And he said, you were wonderfully made. You're wonderful. He said, it doesn't matter if you're black or white or Hispanic or African or Asian or Indian or any other people group that God has allowed 
to be created. He said, I fearfully one and wonderfully made you my black, my white, my Asian brothers and sisters, my Hispanic. I fearfully and wonderfully made you no matter what complexion you are, no matter what language that you speak and no matter what part of the world you're in, I fearfully and wonderfully made you. You're unique on purpose. God said, I made you the color you are. I made you the shade you are. I even made you the gender you are on purpose. Whether you're male or female, there's no hierarchy in the body of Christ, but you are made unique. You are made beautiful. You are made wonderful because you belong to God. And he said, I glory in your uniqueness. I'm glorified through your differences, the way that you are displayed. I'm unique on purpose. Yes, yes, you're unique on purpose. God made you with the complexities, with the differences, with the shades, with the languages, with the hair, with the body on purpose because you are uniquely made by God. Amen? That's so good. We are uniquely made. Don't change your shade. Don't change your hair. Don't change your beautiful complexities of who you are, but embrace your uniqueness. Embrace it, y'all. God has made you unique on purpose. Number two is understanding is God's posture. When you think about God on race, in Proverbs 3, 19 says, By wisdom the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. He understood that we would need a place called heaven because we would fall short. So when God created and laid the foundations of the earth, his understanding posture was, I know my son, my daughter, my children are going to mess up. I know that they're not going to get everything right. I know that there would be this thing called racism or um, understanding that everybody's not going to see things the same. Or I know people are going to have different experiences based on the lives that they live. They're going to be divided by language. They're going to be divided economically. They're going to be divided by skin tone. They're going to be divided. They're going to look divided. But he said, my plan is not for you to be divided, but is to be unified. And so God said, with understanding, I set the heavens in place that we would need God. And we would need the gospel of Jesus Christ in order to be made whole, in order to be reconciled unto God. God would need to send his son, Jesus, because of our division in our hearts and our inability to be made perfect or whole, we would need to be made perfected by the gospel of Jesus Christ and Jesus in our lives. So understanding is his posture when he created you the way that he did, uniquely and on purpose. Number three is he created us with the idea of being unified. So unified was always his desire. Unity was always his intention. Ephesians 4, 2 and 3 says, With all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. God's desire was for us to be unified and it's always for us to be unified, no matter the skin complexion, no matter the age, no matter the gender, male or female, no matter the economic situation, rich or poor. God says, I look at my children all the same. God's ultimate plan is unity with race from the beginning and it is in the end. We're different, but we're unified. And God said, celebrate the differences because, because I created you fearfully and wonderfully made. I did that on purpose. And I want you to celebrate that, that the way you look and even your persona, the way you act in love. And so I want to share this passage of scripture 
in Revelations chapter 7, verse 9 through 12, which kind of culminates everything that we've been talking about. You're unique on purpose, number one. Your understanding is his posture, number two. And you're unified is his desire from the beginning and to the end. These are the three different points that we've been talking about today in the beauty of God on race and what he thinks biblically. So we got Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 12. It says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell to their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessings and glory with wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power with might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. In this passage of scripture, God said, from the beginning when I created you in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to be in my image, ultimately my image is love. My image is the spirit of God. My image is unity. My image is all these things culminated. And then in the book of Revelations chapter 7, when we read this passage, he said all people groups, all nations, all colors, all tribes will be standing before me and saying blessing and glory and honor in Jesus' name. They'll, they'll be declaring God's glory. And so this is what I believe that Revelation chapter 7 is saying. What if we can experience that now in our church, in God's church? What if we can see all people groups, all nations, all colors, all languages coming together on one accord and saying blessing and honor and glory? What if we could see that right now? If we could see heaven on earth as it is in heaven, it is in earth. We are a church that desires to perpetuate the gospel of Jesus Christ through all people groups, all languages saying blessing and glory and honor to God. Pray, we praise you because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Your uniqueness is on purpose. God created you on purpose to be different, to look different, to have different hair, to have different skin complexion, to be a man or to be a woman. God said, I uniquely made you in that purpose. So live in that when you live in your full identity. He said with understanding, I created and laid the foundations and I set the heavens in place, understanding that we would need a place to go. We would need a place to experience because of our differences. And God says, I want you to celebrate your differences. And then he said, my greatest desire is for you to be unified together. He said, how beautiful it is to see brothers dwell together in unity from the bond of peace the spirit of unity with all humility and gentleness and patience. How many of you know to celebrate differences, you have to be patient. You have to be humble. If somebody doesn't speak like you or somebody speaks with a different tone or dialect and you don't understand them, you have to be patient. If somebody doesn't look like you, you have to be patient. If somebody's experiencing something different in the world, you have to be patient. You have to be humble. You have to humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of God and he'll lift you up. And ultimately, Jesus was raised to the right hand of the Father because he was so humble. He said, you know what? My, my creation looks different, but yet I want the body of Christ to operate together. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying today, 
that I want my church to be different people of different nations and cultures and different ways, but yet I want them to be in unity by the bond of peace and the Spirit of God. This is what we desire. This is what we perpetuate in God's kingdom, in God's church, as we celebrate differences. We, we strive for unity. He said, if at all possible, Scripture says, live in peace with everyone. Do the best that you can to be patient with people that don't look like you, that don't think like you, that don't speak like you, that don't make the money you make, that they're not the same status economically or don't have the same type of career that you have. Everyone is different. And God says that's on purpose. That's the way that I created my people. And so God on race, you're intended to be different. So we praise God for your differences today. And we love God because he loves all. He first loved you and he first loved me. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. It's been an amazing time in the spirit. Um, tomorrow morning, Monday morning, we have prayer. Please connect to our Facebook page for details on these announcements. Wednesday, we have our midweek check-in. Thursday, we have Bible study on identity. It's been amazing. My friend Martin teaching it. And then next Sunday, we're so excited that we'll be together in person meeting Sunday at 11 a.m. And we'll also be meet, have a video online as we did today at 2 p.m. Central Time. So God bless y'all. Please join in and connect like our Facebook page, Dream Movement Katie. And y'all have a blessed weekend. And feel free to share this video with anyone. Thank you.